Hi everybody, this is Daniel Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is an Answering Questions episode, and we got three questions today, so let's actually get right down to it. Brendan from Morris, New York, who actually, he's got two questions, and basically the first one is, I wanted to know, did you have ever seen the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles or Denver Museum of Nature and Science? Well, Brendan, uh, uh, you see, the basically the simplest answer is is uh no i haven't and and those are and those are the museums that are actually the top 10 museums i need to go see and considering that they're actually um uh places that i do want to go at some point and also uh time is also a big factor though too and and money is also a big thing too so i got i gotta make sure i have enough money and also i plan ahead of time to actually go see the see these museums and uh hopefully uh, uh i could get down there get down to those museums at some point uh, but hopefully I can get there but hey what can you do you know and your second question is in your opinion what do you think Indominus Rex from movie from the movie Jurassic World well I would say that the first the first uh, time I saw the trailer of Jurassic World I actually thought like like they they're probably overstepping it a little bit in terms of why are they actually doing like a hybrid dinosaur to actually to actually be the villain of of Jurassic World I mean I understand that like uh, Hollywood needs to make a movie make a dinosaur movie that actually does have like a villain where basically would be the scariest dinosaur and um, and basically like they said in the Jurassic world film is basically they wanted to um they wanted the best uh t-rex uh by making it bigger and scarier and that would actually scare the kids and even the grown-ups but even though i and then when i actually got to see the movie it was actually a good character i thought it was a good character for uh jurassic world i thought it was actually kind of a really cool villain uh, i would say that and um and that's and I even if you watch my review of Jurassic World, you actually um, you can actually um, uh, tell why um, I might have given the film a pretty good praise, and also um, why I say it's my second favorite film uh, in the Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World series, and considering that Jurassic Park is my favorite, so. All right, Greg from Sherwood, Ohio, who actually says, "My new question has to do: Were there any predators other than humans capable of killing ground sloths? And if they could, how would they kill? How would they do it? Predators being ones that actually coexisted with the sloths and not ones pitted against them in versus matchups like Transformers Rex or." Super Crocs like Dinosuchus, Sarcosuchus, or Purosaurus, for example. Well, uh, I would say if we actually had to go back to the Pleistocene, basically, uh, there, Greg, I would actually say that the only animals that were probably actually taken on a ground sloth would have, act would have actually been uh, cave bears or otherwise um, saber toothed cats. And so, saber-tooth cats would have been able to actually kill a ground, a juvenile ground sloth, and so will um, cave bears. Otherwise, I like to say the short-faced bear in North America. And what I would think is this: I mean, I think the short-faced bear could actually take on a full-grown uh, adult ground sloth, but the thing is, is that ground sloths are so are so heavily built and basically they got weaponry that could kill predators if they actually try to attack an adult and see those claws can do some real damage and so those would have actually been really hard uh, animals to kill especially that um, that when you actually look at ground slots they were pretty tough very robust and so they probably had a lot of muscle on them so pretty much they were not going to be brought down very easily with strength so you really need to actually have a really good set of weaponry to actually kill a ground sloth but i think the short-faced bear and if you we could possibly do it uh, but even though um if you actually look at the labrea tar pits uh, there are some ground sloths there and 
Sometimes you can actually find saber tooth cat's bones next to it, or dire wolf bones, or other ways short faced bear bones. You know, all those kinds of uh, animal, all those kinds of predators. But even though dire wolves probably would not take on a ground sloth, considering that it's way too heavily built uh, for them to take down. I mean, if it did hunt, if the basically if the dire wolves were in packs. I would say that they would still avoid a ground sloth, uh, even though if they try to attack one, uh, their their biggest prey of choice would have actually been bison, the North American bison, the ancient version of the North American bison. And uh, I would say saber-toothed cats would have actually had the ability to actually take down uh, juveniles uh, more than adults. And that's my opinion. I don't think they would actually go for an adult unless if the adult was actually, uh, like, say, like if it was trapped or otherwise uh, if it was injured or otherwise uh, sick, old, or weak. You know, that would be the only way that I think a saber toothed cat could actually take on uh, a ground sloth. But if it was a fully healthy adult, I would say, I would say the ground sloth would have never actually gotten to. I'd say the ground sloth would have actually killed uh, the saber-toothed cat very easily. As with the short-faced bear, I would say that the short-faced bear, since it has those bone-crunching jaws and it has those really long claws with those big paws, uh, I would say that it could take on a, an adult ground sloth. But it, since that the short-faced bear was more of a scavenger than a predator, I would actually say it would very rarely uh, attack rarely go after a ground sloth but it, it, i mean it's just all speculation really i mean it, you could put it in any other way uh, of how you actually would envision uh, other predators attacking a, a ground sloth now as for like the larger cave bears like in europe uh i would say since they're a little bit more herbiv herbivorous than than carnivorous so pretty much they would probably avoid ground sloths mostly but even though if they actually had the chance to see a dead ground sloth uh, within walking distance, I would say that they would actually eat one if they had the chance. But anyway, it, it's all opinion right now, so yeah, that's all I got for that one. All right, that's it for now. And uh, next week, now next Sunday will actually be uh, a new special episode. And uh, I already got some people that are actually giving me dinosaurs. Uh, to talk about or otherwise other prehistoric animals uh, but uh, feel free to give me suggestions of what uh, prehistoric animal you want me to talk about it could be dinosaurs could be a uh, prehistoric sea monster could be uh, prehistoric birds could be prehistoric reptiles uh, anything you know just this mainly vertebrates I only count vertebrates and uh, and you can still send me questions uh, for any answering questions episode that will be coming up and email and Facebook is open. So if you got a question about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or otherwise you can go on my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts with Dino Chris. Uh, like the page, you can actually post your questions on any comment in the comment section on any Facebook post. And you can also follow me on Twitter at CSGRALL. That's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff there. And also uh, take care of the people around you. And also for you younger people out there, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are the best motivation you can have for good education. It's very important to have a good education because with a good education, you get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now. And I'll see you guys next Sunday. That'll be August 9th. <laughs>